Likewise, pleasant feelings are not the real basis of sensual attachment, because even though those who are detached from the impurities of the third trance state, Diana, are disgusted with pleasure, they still love the self. Nor is the view of real selfhood the real basis of sensual attachment, because even though those who are not yet beyond the stage of learning believe that there is no self, and do not arouse any desire or love for the belief in a self, they nevertheless still arouse love for an inner self. Nor are the, other, evolving consciousnesses the real basis of sensual attachment, because even though those who are not yet post-learners and seeking the cessation of mind are disgusted with the other evolving consciousnesses, etc., they still love the self. Nor is the material body the real basis of sensual attachment, because even though those who are detached from the impurity of form are disgusted with the material body, they still love the self. Unassociated dermas, Vipraktisams gra, have no distinct substance apart from form, mind, etc., and therefore cannot be the real basis of sensual attachment. When ordinary people and those still learning, the way, arouse self-love, whether they love the other aggregates or not, they still generate a self-love with this, alaya, consciousness as its object, and therefore only this consciousness is the real basis of sensual attachment. Consequently, when the Hkataragama speaks of an alaya, it is indicating this, and only this, alaya consciousness. We have quoted the holy scriptures and now shall resort to correct reasoning. A scripture says, it is that which has accumulated and created the seeds of impure and pure dermas, and for that reason it is called siddha, mind, from the Sanskrit root ci, meaning, to accumulate, because without this consciousness there is no mind to hold the seeds. 22. A Satrantika position, in opposition to the Satrantikas, who believe that the first six forms of consciousness contain the seeds, we reply that, those evolving consciousnesses are disrupted in the samadhi of cessation, samapati. they are born from sense organs, objects, backslash different acts of, attention, and vary as to moral species, and they easily dissipate, and being fleeting, like flashes of lightning, they do not endure. Therefore, they cannot be perfumed, they cannot hold seeds, and they are not the mind that accumulates impure and pure seeds. The eighth consciousness is a single species and is not interrupted, like the sesame seed that endures and can be perfumed, and therefore corresponds to the mind spoken of in the scriptures. If you do not admit the existence of a mind that can hold seeds, you not only contradict the scriptures, you also violate correct reasoning. Active dermas of the classes, pure, and impure, could not perfume and create seeds, in the absence of a consciousness that is perfumable, and if that were the case, the existing dermas would quickly lose their power. Also, if presently existing pure and impure dermas are born without seeds as cause, this would result in the spontaneous generation held by non-Buddhists. Form and other dermas not associated with mind, like sound and light, etc., are not mind, and in principle are not perfumed by internal pure and impure dermas, so how can they hold seeds? Also, they have no self-existence apart from consciousness itself, so how can they be considered to be the support of internal seeds? In conclusion, then, the evolving consciousnesses and their associated mental activities are interrupted as consciousness, in the meditative states of cessation, easily appear and disappear, are not independent of form and mind, are not of the nature of mind, cannot hold seeds, and do not accept perfuming. Therefore reason demands that some other mind must exist that holds seeds. 23. A divergent Satrantika position another, Satrantika, theory is that although the first six forms of consciousness have changed from state to state since beginningless time due to the organs and their objects, they remain unchanged as the species, jaslasha, consciousness, and are therefore perfumable and can hold seeds, since they remain unchanged as the species, consciousness. As a result, impure and pure causes and effects are created, so what need is there for insisting on an eighth consciousness? We reply, your position makes no sense. Why? If your species, jati, is real, this is the same as what non-Buddhists teach. If you admit that the species is a fiction, then it has no particular function and must not have the ability to hold real seeds of internal dermas. Also, in what category is your species, consciousness, included? If you categorize it as good or bad, 
it is unable to take perfuming, because you admit that it is determinate, like the cessation resulting from discrimination, pratisamkajinaroda, which, being good by nature, cannot be perfumed. If it is indeterminate, then when mind is either good or bad, there will be no non-determined mind, and the species will be interrupted. If the actual mind is good or bad, the species cannot be indeterminate, because the particular species must be the same as the particular thing itself. Also, this species definitely does not exist in the mindless states of samadhi, and since there is an interruption its nature is not firm and stable, so how can it be maintained that it holds seeds and takes perfuming? Moreover, since the minds of arhats and ordinary people would be of the same species, they would be perfumed by soiled and pure dermas. To agree with this is a mistake. Finally, organs such as the eye, etc., would be of the same species as other dermas, such as visual consciousness and other organs, and would therefore perfume each other. You will not admit this, and so you should not hold the opinion that the species, consciousness, takes perfuming. 24. A Darstantika opinion also, since two successive moments of the first six consciousnesses, whether as a species or as individuals, are not simultaneous, like two separate moments, they do not perfume each other because the perfumer and the perfumed must be simultaneous. 25. The Mahasamgika as for the Mahasamgika opinion that the first six consciousnesses evolve simultaneously, we reply that they are not perfumable, for reasons given earlier, and therefore they also do not qualify as being able to hold seeds. 26. The Sthevras there is an opinion that prior form or mind become subsequent seeds of their own species without interruption, thus establishing the principle of cause and effect. Therefore the previously mentioned, eighth consciousness, is not established. This opinion is unreasonable, because it docks not involve perfuming. Since the species of those form and mind are not perfumed, how can you maintain that the former becomes the seed of the latter? Also, if there is an interruption, the Dharma is not born again. Those of the two vehicles who have progressed beyond the learning stage will have no final aggregates, because form and mind at the point of death become seeds for afterwards, when they cease in nirvana. You must not say that form and mind alternate as seeds for each other, because, as previously mentioned, the evolving consciousnesses and form are not perfumable. 27. The Sarvastivadins there is also an opinion that the dermas of the three times past, etc. exist, so that cause and effect move forward with no difficulty, so what is the point of holding the opinion that there is a consciousness that holds seeds? When a scripture says that mind I say seed, it means that it generates impure and pure dermas and its energy is powerful. This is not reasonable, because past and future are neither eternal nor present, and, like a imaginary of flowers in the sky, they do not really exist. Also, they have no function, because they cannot be held to possess the nature of causality. If there is no consciousness that holds impure and pure seeds, none of the causes and effects are established. 28. Bhavavika There is an opinion that the Mahayana doctrine of emptiness as the denial of characteristics is absolute. Based on faulty inference, Bhavavika denies the existence of this consciousness as well as all dharmas. He is in strong contradiction with the above quoted scripture. To hold as unreal knowledge, of suffering, extinction of its cause, realization, of nirvana, and practice of the path, as well as defiled and pure causes and results, is to hold a terribly false view, because the non-Buddhists, slandering, the principle of, defiled and pure cases and results, also do not claim that, defiled and pure dharmas, are utterly non-existent but only unreal. If none of the dharmas really exists, bodhisattvas would not energetically cultivate and accumulate the equipment for bodhi in order to abandon samsara. What wise person, 